This video is sponsored by Enlisted. Baldur's Gate 3 is packed to the brim with secrets and rare conversations that even the most astute players may miss. In this video, we're going to explore some of these edge cases and unearth some unique dialogue you've probably never seen before. I didn't discover all these secrets on my own, so where relevant, I've provided credit to other content creators showing off these secrets. So buckle up, grab some iced coffee, and let's take a look at some of the rarest dialogue and details in Baldur's Gate 3. Number 1. What happens if you recruit Karlak before Will? Given that the map is designed to funnel you right towards the Emerald Grove and the big fight against the goblins outside the gate, most players are going to recruit Will shortly thereafter and pick up his companion quest to hunt down a one-horned tiefling. But if you seek out Karlak before adding Will to your party, you actually get a unique cutscene as Will ambushes you at the camp. The Blade of Frontiers. Thought I'd shaken you for good after the Mind Flare ship. You just can't get enough of me, can you? Karlak, Advocatus Diaboli, the stink of Avernus. The devil's head and yours. If you so much as... A great fire roars through you. The fire of the first hell. You are the blade of frontiers racing through the wastes of Avernus. Just ahead, a diabolical figure, red skin, single curled horn, blazes with flame, bloodied great axe held high. He chases the fiend, ignited with rancor. She is an infernal war devil, a threat to the living, evil incarnate. Your allies are fraud, a soldier in the archdevil Zariel's army. Either I cut her down, or she burns the sword coast to ash. I've tried to tell you, I am not what you think I am. I... Uh... Another vision. Karlak's blade raised, slicing through devils, Zariel's servants, as her eyes dart around, seeking escape. The man shudders with Karlak's desperation. She is a victim of the Blood War, not an agent of it. By Baldrin's helm, I... No. I will not be tricked. You saw the truth. I may be an effective soldier, but I never wanted to serve Zariel. Legged it away from her the first chance I got. And yet you served. The man catches his breath and his lips straighten. Sheer dread twists his face. No! Devils cannot be trusted. Would you listen to sense? This doesn't have to end badly for either of us. You know monsters, right? Better than anyone. Look into my eyes. Can't you see I'm not what you think? You really are no devil, are you? I've... I've been deceived. Oh, thank the gods. Thought I was gonna have to take your head. You would have died in the attempt. But there have been enough threats today. Truce? I'll do you one better. Allies. We're looking to get rid of these parasites for good and ruin some bastard's days while we're at it. Sounds like your kind of venture. I've not grown any tentacles yet, thank Baldron, but luck won't be on our side forever. Yes, you have my blade. Your leader willing, of course. Well, soldier, what's the word? Hey! Well met, and a thousand sorries. I've pledged my life to protecting the meek from monsters. But tonight, I was the rampaging beast. I see the good in you, Karlak. I promise not to lose sight of it, even when the hells burn hottest. This is the peaceful option, but you can also decide to turn on Karlak or kill Will. 
Enlisted is a squad-based historical first-person shooter combining thrilling PvP and PvE encounters. You can play for free today on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. Lead a team of squadmates into the most famous battles of World War II and go head-to-head -head against other players. You'll need strategic thinking to leverage your squad's strengths and come out on top in battle. As a history buff, I'm impressed with Enlisted's commitment to bringing historical weapons and armies into the game. Choose from an arsenal of over 400 weapons and tanks, and fight for the Axis or Allied powers. You can download Enlisted for free right now by clicking on my link in the description or pinned comment. New players on PC will get a limited time bonus pack including 4,000 silver and 3 days of premium account. So click on my link in the description to download right now. Number 2. What happens if you talk to Orin's mother? After locating the Temple of Ball and tracking down Orin, we can discover a prominently displayed coffin in Orin's bedchamber. This contains the corpse of Orin's own mother, and if we use the Speak with Dead spell, we can learn some interesting details about our arch nemesis. The corpse regards you lifelessly. Helena, Antef, daughter of Saravok, mother of Orin. Orin, my daughter. I tried to kill her, but she killed me first. I wanted to be both chosen. Saravok told me she must be my offering. I was close my hand around her throat. I failed. Now she worshipped him, loved him. So did I. Alters Gate Brandon District. The spell's power wanes. You can ask no more questions. Even more interesting, if we manage to sneak into Orin's room and talk to her mom before the boss fight, we can actually confront Orin with this information, which is an alternate way of saving her captive victim without using a persuasion check. Oh, did it think it could protect? Did it think it could save? Only the blades can offer salvation. will not save you. <sighs> Liar! Your skin will be grandfather's shroud, coward! I will flay you where you stand! Number three, stealing Balthazar's mother. Staying on the theme of mommy issues, next up we have Kethrick Thorm's creepy lackey, Balthazar. When speaking to Balthazar, he'll mention that his mother is in a jar on the shelf over in the corner. And sure enough, there is an urn labeled Mother Dearest right where he said it would be. Do you think Balthazar would get angry if we stole his mother's ashes? 
The answer is yes, and if you manage to pull it off, you can unlock some unique dialogue with the big man. Unfortunately, this thing is an absolute pain in the ass to steal. For starters, it's labeled as out of reach, even though it appears to be right at eye level for my main man, Astarian. I was able to reach it after climbing onto a box that I dragged in here from a nearby room. But even then, all I could do was throw the urn, which usually breaks it. I was able to successfully steal the ashes one time, but was caught in the process. And even though I managed to get Balthazar to de-aggro, he would no longer speak to me. In previous patches of Baldur's Gate 3, you could actually purchase the ashes from Balthazar by entering the trade menu, but as of now, this item no longer appears. So after an hour of fiddling around with this, I threw in the towel and looked up the conversation on YouTube. I was able to hunt down a couple of clips showing what happens when we obtain his mother's ashes, and the results are hilarious. We're still close. She's in a jar on the shelf over there. <laughs> Give me back my mother this instant. I gave you a chance, mother thief. Number four. What happens if you betray Gortash right before the ending? Making a pact with Gortash is the simplest path to obtaining his Netherstone in Act 3, since he'll end up getting bodied by the Big Brain. You can choose to betray Gortash at any point, including right before confronting the Brain at the Morphic Pool. And if you do this, you'll get some hilarious dialogue with the Chosen of Bane. Think you can take me on? <laughs> you damn fool! We're on the cusp of confronting an entity beyond comprehension! We need to work together! What a coincidence. So did my foot. Don't do that again, hmm? Or the next slip will be fatal. <laughs> Enough! Time to die. Number five, blowing up a Starian. There is a hidden chamber below the Githyanki Kresh, which houses a powerful mace called the Blood of Lathander. To unlock the mace, you need to obtain a few items by completing puzzles throughout the Rosy Morn Monastery. That, or you can just grab the mace off the pedestal, which causes a giant laser to activate and blow up the entire crash. If you fail to escape the area before the laser goes off, then your party will be wiped out. Interestingly, if you manage to survive, but leave a Starian behind to die in the crash, he will have some unique dialogue if you revive him back at the camp afterwards. What in the sweet hells were you thinking? Activating that lot, I was right there! Gods! Do you have any idea how much that hurt? Well, apparently there's a limit. Somewhere between a nice summer's day and the full concentrated power of the sun! Next time, just warn me before you do something stupid. At least then I can get out of the blast radius. Now, shall we go? Or do you have any other chaos you need to unleash here? Number six, what happens if you knock out Marina's brothers? While exploring outside the Emerald Grove, we can encounter two men interrogating the old woman, Auntie Ethel. They believe, rightfully so, that Ethel kidnapped their sister, Marina, and they plan to pull out all the stops to save her. Marina's brothers will wind up dead no matter what you do here. If you side with Ethel, they will attack you. And even if you take their side, they will run off and get themselves killed at Auntie Ethel's lair. However, if you side with Ethel and then knock out Marina's brothers by toggling non-lethal attacks, then you'll actually get a unique dialogue option when speaking to Marina and Ethel at the Riverside Tea House. What is it? What's going on? What? No! Dead! Everyone's dead! Such dramatics. So yeah, even though your line of dialogue is different, Larian apparently didn't record different voice lines for Marina. So she still reacts as if her brothers are dead. Didn't you hear what I just told you, homegirl? They're still alive. Number seven, 
What happens if you abandon hope? One of my favorite quests in Act 3 involves invading Raphael's House of Hope to steal the Orphic Hammer. During our journey, we'll be aided by a captive woman named Hope who begs us to set her free. However, if we choose to abandon her, then she unfortunately becomes a target for Raphael. Instead, you're not so different to doomed Cassus, overreaching your limits and burning your world to ash. And Hope already burned. If we return to the chamber where Hope was held captive, she'll be naught but a pile of ashes. Number 8. Sacrifice Astarian to the Gur Hunters While exploring outside Ethel's lair, we can meet a bearded man who is on the hunt for Astarian. If our vampire friend is in our party, then Astarian will end up killing the man. However, before this happens, we also have the option to give Astarian over to the hunter. And if we do, we'll get some unique outcomes in Act 3. His name is Astarian, but I fear he's gone to ground. I hope the hag of these lands can help me flush him out, if I can afford her blood price. What? What? It isn't possible. You idiot! What have you done? You treacherous little worm. A just choice. I thank you for your help. My people work to rid this world of evil. You are a friend to our cause. But things don't end well for Astarian or the Gur people. In Act 3, if you head to the Gur camp in Rivington, you'll find everyone has been slaughtered and that bearded dude will be hostile. If you use Speak With Dead on the Gur leader, she'll let you know that Kazador slaughtered all her people to reclaim Astarian for his dark ritual. Later in Act 3, we can still confront Kazador while he performs the ritual, and if we do, he'll taunt us for how easily we discarded Astarian. Wait! No! It cannot be! Were you the one who took my poor Astarian under your wing only to abandon him so cruelly? Oh, please, I care not for your petty drama. In truth, you made all of this possible. Now that he is mine once more, I have everything I need. This ritual, this black mass that has been centuries in the making, is finally ready. Witness the birth of the Vampire Ascendant. M.K. At some point, Astarian must have been killed and raised from the dead because we can spot zombie Astarian in the arena next to Cazador and the other vampire spawn. Number 9. The Secret Funeral at Last Light Inn When we arrive in the Shadow Cursed Lands, we can stumble upon a group of Harpers patrolling in the dark. This triggers a combat encounter where our party and the Harpers are swarmed by shadow creatures. Usually the Harpers will perish during this fight, but if you play extremely aggressively, you could potentially save them all. And if you do this successfully, you can witness a brief cutscene next to the Last Light Inn, where the surviving Harpers bury Jonas, the dude who got yoinked by the shadows right when we arrived. He was joking this morning. Jonas, I mean. He was always joking, said it was good for morale, but he just liked seeing people laugh. He was a good harper. A good friend. We were comrades in arms. I thought we could have been something more one day, but too late now. I don't know, and I never will. I'm sorry, I'd like to be alone. Hope you're faring all right. Jonas might be gone, but the rest of us can't give up yet. Poor Jonas, kid was as green as they come. I don't know if you have to save all the Harpers to get this scene, probably just the one lady, but in any case, it's a nice touch that a lot of players will miss. So there you have it. 
Nine secrets and rare dialogue you probably missed in Baldur's Gate 3. Shout out to Enlisted for sponsoring today's video. Click on my link in the description and start playing for free today on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. New players on PC will also receive a special bonus pack, so make sure you don't miss out. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more BG3 and RPG videos. Big shout out to all the channel members for supporting my content. Until next time, this has been Big Dan. I should go.